Hello, my name is Pavel Kabir, and I'm a product manager and software engineer at Velixa. In this tutorial, we'll build a flexible accounts receivable aging report using pivot tables and generic inquiry functions introduced in Velixa 5. Let's start by defining our aging buckets. In essence, we'll be categorizing each outstanding invoice by how bad it is in terms of how many days has passed since the invoicing date. We'll define the lower boundaries of each bucket as 0 days, 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. Now, let's specify a human-readable description for each bucket. We'll define this description using a formula. If this is the last row of the table, we'll describe it as over x days for very old overdue invoices. Otherwise, we'll describe an interval from the value in the current row to the value in the next row. Next, our task is to categorize each outstanding invoice as belonging to one of these categories. We shall begin by obtaining the list of all open invoices. We need the invoice status to be open. Let's say we're interested in these branches. Next, we would like to include all customers. And we would also like the report date to be flexible. The columns to include report parameter will hold the generic inquiry columns that we would like to obtain. The inquiry that we'll be using to display the documents is called AR, Invoices and Memos. In Acumatica, make sure that the Expose via OData checkbox is checked and save changes if needed. We will not include every column from the inquiry, as there are quite a few. Instead, we will only report document type, reference number, customer code, customer name, date, posting period, document status, total amount of the document, and its balance. Now let's prepare a filter for the generic inquiry based on our report parameters. For that purpose, we'll use the GI filter function. We specify the connection name, the inquiry name, and then list the filtering criteria for each column. The status should be open, the branch should match the specified range expression, and for that purpose we'll pass it through the expand branch range function, which ensures that the range expression is converted to an Excel array. This is required because GI filter does not work with range expressions directly. For each criterion, it expects either a single value or an array of values. And the customer name can be anything. As you can see, the GI filter function has prepared a filtering expression for us that can now be used to filter the generic inquiry AR invoices and memos to only include documents that match the reporting parameters that we set. To list the documents, we'll invoke the GI function. Specify the connection name, the inquiry name. We'll reuse the filter that we've just prepared. And for the select arguments, we specify the columns to include report parameter. Here's the list of our matching documents. The balance for each document in this table is a positive number. However, for aging purposes, credit memos should have a reverse sign, because it is not the customer who owes to us in this case, but we owe to the customer. Thus, we'll introduce the aging balance column to conditionally flip the document balance just for credit memos. And we'll also add a column for the aging bucket, that is, the aging category assigned to the document. 
from the ones that we prepared earlier on a separate worksheet. The formula that we're entering in the aging balance column ensures that the balance sign is flipped for credit memos. Let me quickly apply monetary formatting to the numbers here. Before categorizing each document into an aging bucket, for clarity, let's also add a column to display how many days have passed since the document date. Because the number of rows returned by the GI function can vary depending on how many rows match the filtering criteria. We do a safety check. If the current row is empty, we'll also return an empty value. Otherwise, the value should be the date of the report minus the date of the document. Finally, we can categorize each document into an aging bucket. Again, we do a safety check for an empty row. And we'll now use the XLOOKUP function to obtain the appropriate aging bucket for the respective value in the days past column. Let's return to our aging buckets worksheet. For the lookup array function parameter, we select the values in the days since document date table column. For the return array, we select all the values from the description table column. If no matching value is found, which will happen only when the document date is in the future in respect to the report date, we'll say current, meaning that the document is not yet due. Matching mode should be set to minus one, denoting an exact match or next smaller item. And we can select binary search for the search mode because our lookup array is sorted ascending. Let's fill the formula down and see how every document in the table has been categorized into one of the defined aging buckets. On a separate worksheet, let's use an Excel pivot table to produce a per customer aging report. Go to Insert, select Pivot Table, for the pivot table range, we'll select the range A8 through L99999. This ensures that our pivot table is resilient. We support the GI function returning up to almost 100,000 documents. We now need to configure the pivot table's values, rows and columns. We want to see aging balance in the values, a customer name per row, and we'll place our aging buckets as the table columns. As you can see, the current column is misplaced because Excel pivot tables know nothing of the aging bucket's natural order. However, we can put it into its proper place by hovering over the column boundary, holding the left mouse button and dragging it to the left. We shall also exclude all empty rows from the pivot table range. For those rows, the aging bucket value is blank so we unselect them in the column labels filter. That's better. Let's also format the numbers as monetary amounts. With this report, we can now see the payment discipline of every customer that we're working with. Finally, we'll create a summary chart to gauge 
how timely we collect our receivables in general. Let's go to a separate worksheet again. We'll insert a pivot table again, selecting the same range as for the previous one. A8 through L99,999. The aging balance goes to values again. We'll do without columns and put the aging bucket in rows and exclude blanks. The pivot table now shows the total amount owed to us by all customers aged by the invoice date. Again, let's move the current bucket to the topmost position by holding the left mouse button and dragging it upwards and apply proper monetary formatting to the numbers. Selecting the whole pivot table range, we'll insert a clustered column chart which will display this data in a visual form. This concludes the tutorial. You can download the sample report following a link in the video's description. This was Pavel Kabir of Velixo Team and I wish you a marvellous day.